to my uh, to my UAC, that's unaccompanied alien child client. Dear Brenner, congratulations on winning your asylum. Do you know this word congratulations? As your attorney, I would like to give you this word because when I try to describe how wonderful and amazing, amazing, amazing America is, this word is a part of my vocabulary. So, congratulations and breathe a sigh of relief. Your life will be easier now that you have legal status. By the way, do you know what drag is? Did you know any drag queens in Guatemala? I met you when you were just 13, and my, how much you've grown in three years. You're a teenager now. One day you'll be an adult, and you'll understand the sentiment. Kids, they grow up so fast. And we've won. I wish I was there to open up that envelope with you. When your dad texted to say that a new letter came and asked what he should do, I immediately thought of Trump. I was prepared for bad news. They held up your approval for over a year after our asylum interview. It was highly unusual. So I immediately had your dad take pics of the letters and text them to me. I read it. Then I squinted at the pick harder, deciphering the meaning of the words one more time. Then once again to make sure, only then did I call up your dad to say, congratulations are awful. You were my first and only client in 15 years of practicing law. <laughs> I was literally YouTubing videos on how to make a court appearance. <laughs> Those times when we went to court together, that was your attorney playing across between Ali McBeal and Dylan McDermott from the practice. <laughs> now that we've won, I've been composing that acceptance speeches. I can't help it. Have you ever won anything? Because I've won drag beauty patches. That's right, your attorney is also royalty. <laughs> I hope your family celebrated. <laughs> because looking back, I think we should have gone after our meal together. I would have liked taking you to my favorite Chinese restaurant for you to try the dry fried chicken wings. I would like to share with you the happiness of my immigrant experience. Because we never had our moment, did we? We never had our close up. Here I am. I'm savoring all my hero worship from my liberal friends on Facebook. And I'm coming to terms with the fact that you've never looked me in the eyes. Not once in three years. We never made eye contact. My hazy memories of law school have me asking, what duty of care do I owe a 13-year-old child who has been traumatized and it's clearly with PTSD. For starters, I should not have grown frustrated with you when you couldn't repeat back to me what you literally just told me when I was taking your declarations. Patience is a virtue, and as my friends can tell you, it's not something I'm very good at. <laughs> or maybe I should have just instructed you to look me in the eye teach you like the way my Chinese mom taught me. Eddie, you have to look people in the eye, otherwise they think you lie. Because when we had our asylum interview, and you started replying, I don't remember, to all the asylum officers' questions, I froze. We went over your declarations. It's your story. You know the story. Just say what happened. Tell your story, that's all you have to do. Do you remember the asylum officer getting frustrated? She said something to the effect of, I need you to focus. Your allegations make very serious allegations. Your declarations make very serious allegations. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, you should know that she probably said this because your declarations went very well. 
We have an attorney who takes pride in his sentences. She asked you one more time if you could remember anything before you finish your testimony. And that's when he said it. I heard the meaning of your words through the voice of the translator. And that helped absorb the shock. You never speak up. To hear your shy mumblings, you coming out of your introversion, you actually volunteered information about yourself. He said he was going to kill himself. We went through six months of preparing your declarations, and not once did you offer this information. But it came at the perfect time. In drag, this is what we call the reveal. On the main stage, in front of the judge who's literally deciding for your life, Shantae, you slay. <laughs> because the energy in the room changed. It was so unexpected. See, I knew what happened to you, but until then, I didn't really grasp what it would be like to be an 11 year old and have both your parents gone and being raised by your 17 year old sister whose husband beats her in a country where the laws won't protect her. Until you said the words, I didn't realize that one day he would kill her. I'm sorry, I forgot that my client is a child. Don't take it personally. If it's any consolation, I'm this way with my friends too. Do you remember all those strange and different translators who called you and texted you, but you never met? They were mostly gay men. And because they're my friends, they like dressing up in women's clothing and lip syncing to Lady Gaga. And I'd like for you to meet them. We should go to San Tom's and sneak a bottle of tequila into a teapot. Because my friends are like cartoon characters. These <laughs> <laughs> bitchy friends of mine who volunteer their time for a stranger they've never met. Would you like to thank them in person? Because that's what my Chinese mom would think we do. And I think you can relate. I think you can relate as a Guatemalan. No matter how foreign you see me, and your dad always referred to me so reverentially as Mr. Attorney, we share commonalities as people of color. We eat the animal parts white people don't. <laughs> In the interest of more full disclosure, I would like to make one more confession. I tried getting rid of your page right after I signed up. I got assigned to a work project in Phoenix, and the reality of what I signed up for finally hit me. I emailed the attorney who assigned me your case, and I politely explained that my appointment took me to another state. I asked to be transferred off the case and be reassigned when I returned. He never responded to my email. And from that point on, your case became the exam that I must pass. And don't worry, I'm Chinese. We're very good at taking tests. <laughs> I never took seriously law school or the practice of law, but it was different now. I have a child whose future depended on me, and failure was not an option. Had I been able to communicate with you, this would be the message I try to say. We are descendants of dragons and pumas and leprechauns and the OG queen herself. You have the strength in you. You have the strength in you. You made it here, didn't you? As an 11-year-old, you fought back against your sister's husband when he kept beating her. You still had that scar in your hand from when he cut you with broken glass. You got balls. And then you made it here 
over 3,000 miles through foreign cities and foreign countries to find yourself with a drag queen attorney with magical powers. <laughs> and then you want asylum. You're special. You're special. I'm a writer. I was an attorney only in drag. In reality, I am a writer. I tell stories. And I want to let you know that the most important stories are the ones we tell about ourselves. And you're special for her. You're here in America. You can be whatever the fuck you want to be. When your time comes, when you're qualified to become a U.S. citizen, say your oath and mean every word of it. Because there will be people who say you're not really an American. They will try to make you feel like you are not real. Half a fine of nominations for them for only human. <laughs> but stand your ground. You may not have been born an American, but you will die an American. These same small-minded people who drove you from your country, these bullies reside in every country. And we're not going to let these same bullies drive us from America. Brunner, you're one of us now. Make it count. We're Americans. We're the good guys. And don't ever forget that. Sincerely yours, Eddie J. Your accidental attorney. <laughs>